Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Ben Strader from EFI University, and uh, we're in here in the engine shop at EFIU and playing around with some stuff. And, you know, one of the things that makes our curriculums great is that we're constantly learning ourselves and doing real research and development and testing so we can find the answers to the questions that you guys have. So recently, we started going down the path of wondering what's really the difference between a wet sump stock oiling system and a dry sump oiling system. All right, well, let's start out with what is a wet sump oiling system? When your engine gets oil that lubricates all the parts, most of it makes its way up to the top of the engine and it has to drain back down by gravity and it gets contained in the sump of the oil pan. So this being a stock oil pan, you can see down in here is what we call the sump. And because it holds the oil while it's waiting to be used for the engine, it's called a wet sump. And that basically sits here on the bottom of our engine and captures all that oil as it's dripping out of the engine. Now the way the wet sump system works is we have to have a pickup tube that's shaped properly to sit down in there and get all that oil out of there. So you got to be real careful that you get the distance from the pickup to the bottom of your oil pan set correctly. If it's set too high off the bottom, you can essentially run out of oil even though there's oil left in the sump that you weren't able to get to. If you set it too close to the bottom, then it's hard to get enough flow into this thing and you can have oil delivery problems that way as well. One of the other disadvantages to having the wet sump oil system is here's our typical LS G rotor style pump. Now there's a few companies like Melling that are making aftermarket pumps and basically controlling how much flow goes into the engine, but this is a crankshaft driven pump. So it actually on an LS block sits here on the front of the engine and it's driven by a little uh, cog like this guy that fits inside the pump. So the pump slides over it and one way or another there, it'll finally slide in, there we go. And that's what drives the oil pump like this. So the crankshaft is actually spinning the pump. Well, that's nice because it keeps the oil pump small and compact and you can move a lot of volume of oil in a short amount of time. The downside is when you start building really high performance racing engines, the high speed of the engine can actually cause problems by moving too much oil. Well, what happens when you move too much oil through the engine is that you start to get too much oil pressure. Well, this pump has a built-in bypass. It's a spring-loaded diaphragm that when the oil pressure gets too high, it releases and recirculates the oil back around. At high RPM though, that becomes a problem because first of all, we're doing work that we're not getting any benefit from. And second of all, it tends to aerate the oil by pushing it all back around and recirculating all the time. So we want to avoid that on a high RPM engine. One of the other problems with a wet sump oiling system is when you have a lot of G-forces in cornering loads or accelerating and decelerating the vehicle. If you uncover that pickup, you're going to suck air in there and push that into your engine, which doesn't exactly lubricate very well. So because of all that oil that's raining down on the engine, we have to have a way to control it and make sure that it doesn't go down there and splash and get back up over everything that's spinning at a million miles an hour inside the engine. So most engines have a thing like this called a windage tray. And this basically bolts up near the crankshaft bearing journals on the block, the actual bearing housing, and it separates the sump in the oil pan from the spinning components. And the idea is to try to keep all that splash from getting back up and causing windage and drag against the crankshaft. So more parts that we need to get performance out of our wet sump oiling system. But let's take a couple minutes and go have a look at the difference between a dry sump oiling system and all of this stuff that it takes to make a wet sump system work. Okay, so we're over here at the shop now looking at a couple of dry sump oil systems and they differ dramatically from the stock wet sump oil pan. Basically what happens here is we're going to take all the oil that's the uh, supply for the engine that we were storing in our wet sump before and we're going to take it off site and store it externally in an oil tank. Now we have an externally mounted oil pump that's on the engine and that's driven by a belt off the crankshaft. One of the first advantages to doing it this way is now we have control over the pump speed. We can speed it up or slow it down by changing the size of the pulleys. When our stock oil pump was driven off the crankshaft, it always ran the same speed as the crankshaft. So that was a problem when we started doing really high RPM. Now we can run our pulleys here at 80% or 50% or whatever we want. So that's the first advantage. The next advantage is there's very little sump volume here in the oil pan. You can see in this one, it's actually very thin 
because the instant that the oil comes out of the engine and hits the oil pan, it's scavenged by the oil pump and it's replaced back over into our offsite reservoir. So when we talk about pump stages, you'll hear people talk about a three stage, four stage, five, even six stage dry sump pumps. What we're talking about here is the actual oil pump. This happens to be a five stage pump. We have this, the pressure section here is our first stage. Then what we have is one, two, three, four scavenge stages. They're sucking the oil out of the pan. So we have these three, four pieces here and that scavenge oil goes into our pump and then it gets discharged back to our holding tank. So that keeps all the oil from splashing around, having to use things like that windage tray uh, and, and really creates a great advantage. But now let's talk about why is it a, wet, a dry sump actually better than the wet sump? Well, if you think about the displacement of your engine and you have your piston, it's going up and down and you're compressing air and you have that pumping action that's happening. Well, a lot of people forget that if I have, let's just use 400 cubic inches as a reference point. Let's say I have an engine that's pumping 400 cubic inches. Well, it's also pumping 400 cubic inches into our oil pan section or the crankcase of the engine every time the engine goes around and goes up and down. And that pumping loss takes work and it costs us horsepower. Because our dry sump is actually evacuating the entire crankcase, it reduces that pumping loss and leaves more power available to put out there to the crankshaft and the tires. Secondly, our combustion pressure that we have from the fuel and, and air exploding and pushing this piston down, how much pressure we make is directly proportional to how much power we can produce as long as we're actually getting to use it. But ring seal is a critical factor in keeping all of that cylinder pressure that we made and using it for the piston. Well, if you think about how a piston ring actually seals, what happens is the difference in pressure between the combustion here and what's on the bottom of our ring actually goes in there and gets behind those rings and pushes them out against the cylinder wall. So if I make the same amount of combustion pressure here, but I actually put vacuum from my oil system pulling here, the difference in pressure across that ring groove gets greater, so my ring seal gets better. So a dry sum system typically makes more power because we reduce the pumping losses, we reduce the amount of splash and windage from the oil system getting oil back on the crankshaft, and we improve our ring seal. But the thing is, does it really? We decided to find out. So we took an engine, we actually put it on the dyno and ran it, just a LS3 standard typical engine. This one happens to have a stroker crankshaft in it, so it's 416 inches, and we ran the engine. We ran it with a totally 100% stock oiling system. Then we unbolted it. We put a five stage dry sump system on it and ran it again. No tuning changes, no difference in fueling or spark or anything like that. We just wanted to see, is there a power benefit? Well, come with me. We'll go over to the dyno and I'll show you the results. sitting over here at the dyno, we completed our testing back to back. We took that engine, we ran it, we took the wet sump off. We really didn't even take the engine off the dyno. We just unbolted all the parts from the wet sump oiling system. We bolted on our five stage daily dry sump to see what would happen. So we made the runs and I'll just give you a little look. Pretty interesting in that uh, with zero tuning modifications to the engine, we did not change the timing, air fuel ratios, anything like that you can actually see here that it was better everywhere from the beginning to the end of the run. I've even done a couple of math channels here to show you the averages, but from 3,000 to 6,000 RPM, this thing was about 17 foot-pounds better on average everywhere and about 14 horsepower better on average everywhere. Some places better, some places a little less than that, but for literally just unbolting the oil system bolting on a new one and gaining horsepower. It's not free, but it's definitely worth it when you consider all of the other safety advantages that the wet sump versus dry sump trade-off gives you. So one of the main reasons that that extra power comes from the dry sump system is by the ability to evacuate the crankcase and have a vacuum. So we recorded that during our testing because remember, since we didn't make any tuning changes, we know that it's not from timing or air fuel ratio or anything like that. 
So on this screen, what we have is the total amount of vacuum that was in the crankcase during the run. The blue line up here represents the run with the wet sump oiling system, where we literally had no pan vacuum. And you can see all the way across, that's what happened. By the time we started evacuating the sump using our dry sump oiling system, at the beginning of the run, down here around 3,000 RPM, we already had about six and a half inches of vacuum in the oil system. And then as we go across, the faster the engine speed goes, you can see that by the time we got to 6,000 RPM here, we had almost 10 inches of pan vacuum. That's gonna improve the ring seal and help with the windage, and that's where that extra power actually comes from.